Thank you very much for joining us on the program held living on ITV. I am Adesua Osa Owage. It's no longer news that uh, the coronavirus is still very much with us. If you go around Benin, you'll see this beautiful billboard, you know, Corona never go. So Corona is still very there. But unfortunately, people are not adhering to the protocols put on ground by government at state level or even federal level, you know, to abate the spread of the coronavirus. I took my time out to monitor some uh, uh, public transport operators and all of that. They discovered that they all use their face masks as their shin guard, you know. They put a face mask like under the chin like this and it ends there waiting for any government official to, you know, come to them and harass them over face mask issue and then they'll quickly wear it. It's not supposed to be like that. The coronavirus is ravaging countries, ravaging states, and then the community spread is serious. A lot of persons did go out of Nigeria in December. Some came in in December, and we can understand that the second wave of this uh, coronavirus is even mutilated and you know there's a lot of problem there all right we have somebody joining us from the uk is a is a health and fitness coach and uh, is a volunteer on covid 19 wahala today for us and we're going to be discussing with uh, daniel inaholo from the uk hello daniel how are you doing uh, okay okay we're so happy to have you so how's the lockdown like in uk Okay. Um, mm. Not just for individuals, but mm -hmm. also for businesses and organizations. Okay. Um, the pandemic is real. Okay. Um, and it's brutal. And I think um, the mass corporations need to take this seriously. Okay. Because it's not a joke. It's quite severe. Okay. Let's extray the second wave of the COVID-19. How is it like? Because even as we speak, there are so many people here. Thank God you're a Nigerian. There are so many people back home here in Edo State who still do not believe that there is COVID-19, not even the first phase, not the second wave. So talk to us about uh, well, the second I, wave and the mutilation. I think, uh, How fast? That's, 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 a, that's a mistake, and it's a colossal mistake if anybody were to think okay. that this pandemic is a joke or is a farce. Um, people are dying in hundreds and thousands all around the world, especially the UK as well. Over the last, what, three, four weeks, we've seen death rate at a daily rate or weekly rate gone up to a thousand or more. So this is not a joke, guys. I think um, wearing a mask does help prevent the spread of this. Um, so people really need to take it seriously. It's no joke. Um, especially in the UK where we have a system of monitoring the transmission, the tests, and all of that where they're all documented facts. Um, I, I think people back home must adhere to the government policy and guidance and take okay. it seriously. It is a, it's not a joke. Okay. All right. Tell us about um, the, 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 the monitoring and the tracing, because that seems to be a lot of problems here. Once somebody gets it, it's, it's nearly impossible to trace those that have been around the, the, the victim or the person that um, is down with the COVID-19, those who has been with. There's this device I, I saw with you while we were discussing. Tell us more about that yes. device. Let's see here. So, um, this was introduced uh, late last year by the government after the first lockdown. Okay. Um, it was actually by the Nat uh, National Health Service um, okay. uh, drive to introduce these sort of policies where every organization, every business must have a track and trace scanner okay. and data available. Um, what that does, it helps monitor who's been in that environment who's been in that particular premises and uh, it helps also the government to track and trace anybody who's tested positive mm -hmm. um to say okay if, for example um this is my studio here i have a track and trace data board just here okay anybody who steps into this premises must scan their, their data on here to say they've been at 2045 in greenwich wow. which means if anybody any of my members were to taste test positive, positive. Everybody who's been here will be notified to say, at this date, this point in time, you visited the studio, somebody within that community had tested positive. Okay. I mean, it's going to self-isolation for 10 days or okay. you need to get tests done. So there are track and trace processes that you need to do 
or introduce that. So, so how effective is this track and trace scanner? How, how effective is it, is it, this track and trace scanner? Very, very effective. I mean, every single local government, uh, we call it the borough of London, have their own database. So, okay. for example, I live in northwest of London, but my studio is in southwest, southeast London. So I have a database for my location currently, which is okay. my studio in southwest London. Can, can, can we just see the scanner? Can we just see the scanner? Let's see. Can we see the scanner? I regular update last week. Okay, can we see the scanner? Let's yeah. see how this yes. um, so track and trace scanner looks like. Yeah, sure. Because I'm sure yeah. Nigerian government will be so interested in this. So this yeah. yeah. Okay. That's how it looks like. So this here, it tells you, it tells you, um, this lets you help stop uh, the spread of coronavirus. Okay. And this is my scanner for my for my business. Okay. So anybody who comes into my business has to use their phone to just scan the picture from okay. here. And it tells them that they registered their visit to this site. And I have this located on all side part of my building. So I have another one at the entrance just there. Okay. But I've got two more inside of the studio that everybody who comes into this premises, compulsory, you have to use that facility there because okay. what that does, it keeps all my members safe and it keeps the community safe. Okay. And just by that small gesture, we're able to monitor the number of positive cases in the community or in the area. Uh, and with that, you can either advise people to either stay self isolating a bit more or keep drumming in that base to get the mask on. And um, you can't go anywhere now without your mask here, and it's compulsory. Um, with the track and trace, they've been able to keep data of the different boroughs um, that are high with COVID tests or with lower COVID, COVID tests. Okay. And they, from this data, they're able to sort of advise people on how to move or how to move around. Mm. And also it helps preventing people from traveling from one destination to the next. Yeah, because yeah. if you are in a low capacity COVID test um, community, obviously you want to avoid traveling to the high infected community. Yeah. So this is another way of trying to Cop keep people spirit. healthy and monitor the progress. Okay, let's talk the, about it. Let's talk about the vaccine quickly. So yeah. how is the vaccine going on where you are? are so people... the vaccine is... Uh, so far, so good. I mean, I mean, the government promised that they want to have as many as one million people uh, vaccinated within the, before the end of the month, okay. which I think is great. Uh, but what they're doing, though, the process here is that we're targeting the most vulnerable people first. Okay. Like the over 80s or people with... Um, underlying ailments. Uh, underlying health conditions. Okay. Um, so these people are the first to go through the phase of getting the, vac the vaccine. Mm. And then it will start rolling out to all the different um, age groups. Okay, I mean, you, you, you didn't say example, that. This, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. But this morning, I got a, I got a message that my local GP, my general practitioner, has received their portion of vaccination. Okay. And they've sent me a text to say I will get a notification of when my appointment will be. Okay. So the government are taking a very, very proactive standpoint in making sure the entire community nation, has anybody reacted uh, negatively to the vaccines yet at least those that have had it because we're hearing yeah, stories yeah. from the you know when you go to the to yeah. the to the social media you get a lot of stories people are already complaining that there are some kind of negative reactions they are beginning to have solemn faces stuff anything like that no not that i've heard of um, nothing to that effect so at this, all this, these vaccines um, are safe they're safe. They're, they're safe. And I think um, I, I, I'm definitely going to be taking one without a question. Um, okay. Because not only does this help with the, with the coronavirus, but what it does also, say, for example, you were, you had symptoms by having this uh, vac vaccination uh, done, it helps um, dilute the, the massive attack to the system. Okay. So there, there's so many positives that, that goes with this vaccine that mm. we should you know, start taking, taking tools on. Okay, let's take you back to testing before we let you go. I know you're busy. We did talk yeah. about um, the, 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 the home kits, you know, while we were yes. discussing a while ago. Tell us more about this home kit, because I am sure if a lot of yeah. persons have this home kit back here at home, it will make, uh, you know, testing kind of uh, easy. Because of stigmatization, so many people don't want to go to the hospitals, you know? So tell us about this, um, this home kit, yeah. So, so um, in the UK, we have um, different locations um, where you could either go into a walk-in um, test center, 
Okay. Where you get your results um, within thirty minutes. Some some people like you get within twenty minutes. 20, within 30, 30 minutes. minutes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you get your result there and then. Um, okay, the, the test is quite invasive because you need to stick the the tube into your nose, right at the canal, to dig up some content on the back of your throat. So, but it's only for a minute. But that minute could be the reason to have a healthy lifestyle or. Uh, a hospitalized lifestyle so okay. it's super super important that people adhere to this the test centers are very very important for us because you can go get your test at any point get your result within 30 minutes mm. or you can get the in-depth test from the nhs sites where mm. you get a result um i think it's within two or three days okay. but that one you need to do all the tests you need to swipe your nose your tongue so do that a couple of times um, that is the most in-depth one, but then we have the home kit, which does exactly the same. Okay. Um, but a bit more expensive, obviously, because you need to buy the kids home. It's not readily available on the on the NHS. So, yeah. So there are different. There are three different levels, basically. One, you can get your result within two and three days. Another one, you can get your result in hours. Another one, the home kit you can get in minutes. So, okay. there are different options available to us here. Okay, so as a word um, of encouragement, as a word of okay, as a word of encouragement or advice to your brothers back home on the use of face masks yeah. and social distancing, what do you want to say? Oh man, I it's, I could not highly recommend this any more than what you've heard so far. Get your mask on, guys. This could be the reason for you being alive or dead. COVID is serious. The mask helps massively to just stop the spread of this virus. Just, it's, it's no joke. I would highly recommend using the mask. It stops the prevention of uh, the spread of COVID. It helps with the prevention of, you know, this mutating um, vaccine, uh, coronavirus that we're seeing now. I mean, we've heard that there are two different mutations that's come about two that are actually more aggressive than the main COVID itself. So please, the mask is not a joke. Put them on, save your life, save your family and your friend's life, and you know, hopefully we'll come out of this um, a lot better and stronger as, as, as people. All right, thank you very much, Daniel, for finding time to be with us on the program, Health and Living. I'm sure we're going yeah. to do this again sometime, yeah? Thank you for having me on the show. Much okay. appreciated. You're welcome. Have a great yeah, day. Thanks. It's a cheers. All right, uh, we've been talking with Daniel Inaholo in the UK. He joined us via Zoom, and uh, you know, the world is a global village. One touch, you're everywhere all over the world. So he just like a little more emphasis on the need for us to be, you know, to adhere strictly to the guidelines on COVID-19. We need to. Like people will say, you know, get leg. Now people, they carry and work out. Let's be very careful. Let's use our face masks. Let's just do, they're, they're so easy. All right. The mutation is serious very serious so let's do all of this and we'll be back all right we have in the studio dr jolly guma dr jolly i hope you enjoyed the conversation mm. we've been having he's the cmd of jono's medical center in uh, benin city you want to have a word with um, the guy over there yes um the it's quite obvious that what he had just explained is advancement in it with regards to geographical yes, difference. Particularly the track yes. and trace scanner. The truth of the matter is the the trackers he was talking about are presently not in use in this part of the world, in Nigeria most especially. Mm -hmm. But however, you can see that if we go to public places like bank, like E tree, even in schools, there is a particular tracker, you yeah. know, which uh, is a modified form of Though the one he was explaining about is quite uh, advanced. advanced. Yeah. So, because of this discussion, we are going to dwell on that. There's something that is common to every person that contracts this coronavirus. They must come down with fever. So, because of that, you can see that we use this infrared thermometer okay. to separate the suspected from the general group. So, of course, those who are suspected to have a coronavirus yes. is expected that they have to keep a safe distance of 1.5 meter. Okay. So as a result, you can see that even if you go to banks, as I said earlier on, you see they use something kind of uh, an infrared from infrared, a distance yes. to just, you know, to see your, your temperature from afar. 
So if your temperature is elevated, even if there are other things that could be responsible for your increase in body temperature, so you will be kept aside. And if possible, you might be sent for questioning to know whether you have a respiratory problem with relations to the increase in body temperature. Okay. And by so, you might be sent for a test to see if possibly you have the coronavirus. So here we have the infrared thermometer, mm. which is an advanced form of what he was talking I'm about talking as about. a tracker. Yeah. Yes. All right, we'll take a very short break. And when we come back, we'll come and talk about fever. What is fever? What are the causes of fever? Treatment and then every other thing that comes with fever. We'll take that very short break. And when we come back, we'll deal with it. Stay tuned. Thank you very much for joining us on the program, Healthy Living. What is the kidney? The kidney is an excretory organ in the body, which is for metabolism. Tuberculosis affects many organs in the body, but the common ones it usually affects is the lungs. Epilepsy is a neurological problem. Okay. It is an injury in the brain, which causes someone to begin to convulse, to go into fits. It is curable but the cure is a long-term thing. If you eat well and avoid those um, risk factors that will make your immunity to be down, then the risk of contacting um, tuberculosis will be reduced. If you're healthy, then you're wealthy. Independent television is okay, like the... In the words of uh, the great musician, the legend, even though dead, but lives on, Fela and Nicolak Bokoti, in a different, different fever, nine days. So today we want to look at fever, different types of fever, are there types of fever? You know, what are the causes of fever? Sometimes people say malaria fever, jaundice fever, typhoid fever, even coronavirus fever. So we're going to look at all of that today on the program healthy living with Dr. Jolly Nusa Iguma, the CMD at Geno's Medical Center here in Benin City. All right, Dr. Jolly, we started well on the COVID-19, but unfortunately, people are not adhering to it. I took my time. I stood at Ring Road for quite uh, some minutes, about 10, 15 minutes. I did say to Selu, I did say to Wasota, and I discovered that most of the transporters, I'm talking about the 2K2K 2K 2K buses, the 2K2K 2K 2K buses that we use in Edo, most of them are not adhering to the protocols of COVID-19 because some still believe that COVID-19, no deal, but there is COVID-19. Everybody's using their face mask like Dr. Jolly Guma, you know, like Shingard and all of that. Some. I actually saw somebody use the, the face mask at the elbow, you know. The person just wore it at the elbow, and I was like, this is, this is crazy. This is getting out of hand. So I want to believe that if there is stringent sanction for not using your face mask, everybody will be compelled to. It got to a point that somewhere abroad they had to, like, open their zoos for the lions to come out on the street, for people to stay at home. It got to that point. So I think that if there is serious sanctions, all of us will use our face masks. Now let's go to what we have today. About 121,566 persons have been infected so far in Nigeria. We've had 97,282 discharged. And of course, 1,504 deaths, which I think is huge. If only we had, um, you know observed the necessary. In some countries, we understand that in some little, little islands, there are no cases of coronavirus. I, I would look up that island and then you know, maybe today or later. So Dr. Jolly, let's look at fever. What is fever, generally speaking? Yes. Fever is elevation in body temperature. When your body temperature is increased over time and this increase in temperature is now outside the thermal regulation system of the brain. Okay. Therefore, we say the person has a fever. What I'm trying to say is that when there is an 
increase in body temperature. The body temperature is under strict regulation. What, what, what's the normal temperature yes. rate? Clinically, the normal body temperature is 36.6 to 37.4. Okay. So in that case, you can see that we have a lower limit and we have an upper limit. So this 36.6 is the lower limit, while 37.4 is the upper limit. So at any point in time, if the body temperature exceeds the upper limit, we yeah. see the person has a fever. a fever. So fever means increase in body temperature. Mm. In that case, you see that your body gets hot mm. externally, not internally. So persons okay. feel internal body heat. It is, may not that, actually it may not be talking it, about. It, yeah, 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 well, when we are talking about fever, we are talking yes. about the increase in body, in temperature. body temperature. Many at times, when the patient comes down with fever, when, they, when somebody comes down with fever, doctors can insist the fever through touching. But this is not the most sensitive way to, to elicit or detect okay. fever in a patient. There is a clinical way we can do this. That is the use of a thermometer. It's what we call a clinical thermometer. Okay. So it's a clinical thermometer that will tell us the range of the body temperature of this person that is coming down with fever okay. and if there's any. So if the temperature exceeds 37.4, which is the upper limit, therefore this person has a fever. So you see that when we are talking about the causes of fever, microbes as being the most incriminating organism okay. that is responsible for fever in our environment. Uh, before this time, we used to know that infectious disease is common in developing countries. Yes. But for the very just now, we are now getting to know that there is a disease that can ravage the world in general, just like the way we are battling with this coronavirus. Yes. So what I'm trying to say is that for one's body to get, for one's body's temperature to get elevated, there is a cause. Mm. Something will be responsible for it because the body must be kept in this homeostatic regulatory system. What does that mean? The body has a fluid. We have the blood, we have the hormones, we have the neurotransmitters, we have the body enzymes. When those ones I've just explained, which is in vivo, which is inside the human body, they work within, a, within the normal body temperature. So if there's an increase in body temperature, there will be an aberration. There will be an aberration. There will be a problem. In that case, Increase in pH or decrease in pH will become a problem to the body. So going back to the causes of the fever, microorganism has been the most incriminating, whether parasitic protozoa, whether bacteria, whether virus, whether fungi, as the case may be. So all these are the infectious cause of fever. However, there are still other causes of fever okay. in our environment. For example, alcohol could be responsible for fever. We have what you call the alcoholic hepatitis. We have what you call the alcoholic cirrhosis. We have what you call the alcoholic hepatocellular carcinoma. Is it, is, is, is it a normal alcohol that people consume? Or? What I'm trying to say is that for a patient that have taken alcohol, okay. for an alcohol an abuser, mm -hmm. with time they might develop a disease that will cause them to have elevated yes. body temperature over time. Okay. Not only that, other than the fact that somebody has contracted infection, from those microbes I've just uh, alighted. Somebody that is taking drugs for the treatment of other things okay. might also come down with fever. You know that your body temperature is elevated. It's now more than the normal upper limit of 37 point. See a doctor or just wait and see what's gonna happen. That is why we actually advise that you don't do safe medication. There's a need for you to see a doctor before you take any medication okay. so that even if you are taking the particular drugs and you now see that your temperature is now getting increased, your temperature is now getting elevated, the doctor will advise you, of course, it's because of this drug that you are taking that you are having this fever, this, fever. this sudden increase in body temperature. For example, some certain, some certain cephalosporin, some sulfonamide, 
some anti-tuberculosis drugs, some anti conversant drugs like phenytoin. Okay, when you are taking that. those drugs, anti-cancer drugs even, mm -hmm. when you take those drugs, you see your body temperature, your body temperature tends to go yeah. up. Not only that, even somebody that has been abusing child over time, okay. withdrawal syndrome may also okay. make this person to have increased body, body temperature. temperature. So what I'm trying to say is that increase in body temperature over a period of time is a problem. And the commonest cause in our environment is infection. Other than infection, there are other causes of fever in our environment. Mm. Okay, doctor, when um, somebody's temperature is high, because often a time we self-medicate. When, um, when somebody has high temperature, the next thing is let's go get some uh, drugs, and they are going to get drugs and all of that. Does that help? Yes. Um, there is a need for us to know the cause of a particular fever. When we have to look at the causes of fever, I've just given microbial causes. Mm. If it's bacterial cause, it could be brucellosis, it could be um, respiratory problem mm. like pneumonia, it could be parasitic causes like uh, malaria fever, it could be viral causes like uh, coronavirus, Ebola virus. So when we treat the cause the of cause, the fever, yeah. automatically, the, the, the fever is itself is a symptom which any disease can manifest. Mm. So when your body temperature is high, there is a disease that is responsible for it. You know, in this part of the world, and with most of us, once your body temperature is high, the next thing is, this is malaria fever. Doctor, please, let's, let, let's distinguish between malaria and fever now. Yes. Before a doctor, we like to evaluate the fever. We do what we call fever analysis. There are different types of fever mm. in another form. If your body temperature is increasing, over time, we now ask, for how long has this fever been? That is to say, for how long have you been having yeah, this increase in body, body temperature? temperature? When does this increase in temperature comes? If the temperature is, if the increase in temperature is continuous, that is throughout the day, the body temperature is high, high. we say continuous fever. Mm -hmm. Most continuous fever is usually microbial related cause, usually okay. bacteria, in form. In that case, you see that both whether morning, afternoon, afternoon or evening, the, the patient comes down, the body is always hot. So in that, that kind of continuous fever is usually uh, Ebola, coronavirus disease, as the case may be. Then there's what we call, in that case, if it is a continuous fever, it means that the body temperature does not fluctuate more than one degree Celsius. Mm -hmm. For example, I told you that the upper limit is 37.4 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. A patient might come down with 38 or 38.5. So that's high. That is high, exactly. So you can see that the difference between this 38.4 hours over, you know, over a course within a dated more than two degrees Celsius. Wow. And the temperature is also continuous. In that case, we say remittent fever. In remitted fever, it means that the temperature is about 2 degrees Celsius higher than, than the normal. normal. And it's also continuous. So the other kind of fever is what we call the intermittent fever. That is classical to the malaria parasite <laughs> in our environment. It comes off and on. Yes, thing, what okay. that means is that instead of experiencing this fever continuously, that is not the case. In intermittent fever, it comes in a particular time of the day, maybe okay. every evening. That is when you feel feverish. So classically, that is a kind of the malaria kind of fever. Mm. And you might feel this feverish condition maybe every evening or every afternoon or every morning in a particular you know, uh, 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 day. So in that case, we say quotidian. What it means is that the temperature is elevated in a particular, in a particular time, of the day. time of the day. It's still possible that if you have this malaria fever, it may not be coming every day okay. in a particular uh, you know, uh, time of the day. It may be coming like once in two days or call alternate day. Mm. 
maybe you have fever this evening. Tomorrow you are fine. Next tomorrow in the evening you have fever. Mm -hmm. It's a form of intermittent fever. So classically, that kind of fever that comes once in a day or two. once in two days, alternate day is what we call the is what, is, is what we call the the Tertian kind of fever. Tertian, that is, it comes once in two days or alternate day. Mm. There's another kind of fever that is also intermittent in form that comes once in three days or once in four days, as the case may be. Wow. So you might feel fever on Monday, then on Wednesday or on Thursday, as the case may be, you also feel fever. I'm just condition. trying to relate that just, to, to a working class person. Yes, like that. what is you wrong that with you? Exactly. You, know? you can see it can be very worrisome. You say you you are sick today. Three days time or two days time, you get sick again mm -hmm. because of the increase in body temperature. Yes. So that is called the quartan kind of fever. So what am I trying to say? The manila fever, for the fact that we live in a endemic area where we have mosquitoes around. So any fever that we feel, anybody that has increased body temperature is attributed to, to, to malaria fever until proven otherwise. otherwise. But however, it has to be analyzed. If the fever is continuous, it's most likely not going to be a malaria fever. So the need for one to quickly go to the hospital is important. Yes, and other than this uh, clinical explanation, there's a need for a laboratory investigation to know if this fever is malaria cause or it is as a result of other infection. Okay, let's look at children because often a time you find out that, oh, because the child had a um, you know, high temperature, the child started convulsing. Can you explain this situation to us? Yes. Uh, like as I was trying to say earlier, the body temperature is under tight regulation mechanism. There is a thermostat in human body. It's just like the way you have a fridge. You have a thermostat that regulates the, the temperature the of the fridge. Yeah. They will also have a thermostatic regulatory mechanism in the human body and it's okay. located in the brain. Okay. And that thermostatic regulation mechanism is called the anterior hypothalamus and the preoptic area. So these are the these are the They are getting very technical now. These are the part of the human body that regulate temperature. Okay. For example, if you feel hot, you are in a very hot zone. When you feel hot, you sweat. When you sweat, it brings about cold. Your sweat will make you to feel cold. That is the vasodilation effect of the skin. Of the, skin. the skin helps to regulate body temperature when we look at the function of the skin. And without this thermostatic mechanism of the brain, it will not be possible. So in that case, if you also feel very odd. I mean, if you also feel very cold, you tend to shiver. You shiver. It occurs in fever too. Mm. After a feverish condition, because of the brain trying to defend the hormones, the neurotransmitters, the enzymes, okay. because of the regulation of the brain, yes. you can see that after you, you, you catch feverish chill. condition, you feel cheese. Because the temperature has exceeded a certain stage now. So because of the brain, because of the neural, because of the higher center mm -hmm. on this increase the body temperature now, you can see that you now tend to feel cheese. As in, you, your feeling cheese is, you feel cold. That feeling of cold will not cause heat production. Okay. So what am I trying to say? During the cold weather, you chiva. That chivery process will not bring heat. So this regulation of coldness, and warmness is under the influence of the brain. Going back to your question, in children, because of the extreme age, children are most likely going to converse if the temperature exceeds 40 degrees Celsius. Okay. It has to exceed. Yes. If the temperature exceeds 40 degrees Celsius, we already know the normal body temperature that is 36.7 to 36.6 to 37.4. So when the body temperature reaches 40 degrees Celsius. Then there's a huge problem. Yes. 
You can see only that. Only for children or, or even in adults. Usually in children because the brain is still developing. Yes. Children are most likely going to convulse if the temperature exceeds 40 degrees Celsius. So what, or, what, 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 what happens when that child convulses? How, how do we treat that child? How do we manage it? Yeah. Because once that happens there, you see people bring, in, bring spoon, bring stick, bring oil, bring this one, you know. Before you know what is happening, the child's mouth is uh, injured already. Yes. If the fever is, if the convulsion is as a result of fever, we say febrile convulsion. convulsion. Febrile and I tell you that it runs in some certain individual, even in some family. Mm. Anytime the body temperature goes Okay, high, something triggers. They tend to converse. But we rise in some other family group, in some children, even if the temperature reaches 40 degrees Celsius, they might not converse. You just so, so, so the need for, for, for people to have this clinical thermometer at home is important. Exactly. So that you can check however, for yourself. However, you run it's into advisable trouble. that for a mother, when you see your body, you, when you touch the body of your child, mm. is getting elevated. There's a need for you to do some home care. Okay. Pull off the clothes. Let air comes in. Okay. If possible, you can also pour water on the body, form of a tepid sponging. Okay. You can also give some antipyretic agents. So before also. that's before the child convulses. Exactly. You don't okay. allow a child's temperature to get to exceed. You know, the to normal. persist over time. If it persists over time, when it gets to 40 degrees Celsius or above 40 degrees Celsius, they're most likely going to convulse. Mm. Because in that case, the brain is still developing. For the fact that the brain has the normal thermoregulatory system, as I've just explained. So we advise that as a mother or as a father. Cover the child up. Yes, you expose the child. Let air come in. Let the brain you know, carry out the function. Because when the temperature gets higher, there's a way the body can, you know, the thermoregulatory system can help to suppress you know, this increase the body temperature. Because mm -hmm. the brain tends to protect itself okay. from getting damaged. That is the essence of that thermoregulatory system. Mm -hmm. When I was explaining about you feel it cold in, uh, hot, in cold weather, then you, you shiver, mm -hmm. then you, 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 you see its production, or you feel warm in very hot sun, you sweat, before you know you start feeling cool. cold, as the case may be. So all these are the functions of the brain. So for a child to have increased in body temperature over a long time, is quite damaging, quite deleterious, quite harmful as compared to adults who already have a fully well established, established a brain, brain development. Okay, the program is held delivering on independent television. You want to call in to ask Dr. Jolly some questions, do that by calling this number that, will, that is going to be on your screen shortly, 52 That's the number to call, 52 The number is right there on your screen. Okay, doctor, we're still talking fever. Now let's look at um, treatment generally. How do we treat fever, whether in adults or in children? Yes. If we are to treat fever, there's a need for us to evaluate the cause of the fever. Okay. So fever, anytime your body temperature gets above the normal, you are having fever. That you have fever is not to say your fever is as a result of malaria parasites. It's not to say your fever is as a result of typhoid. It's not to say your fever is as a result of tonsillitis, pharyngitis, pneumonia, coronavirus, Ebola, meningitis, as the case may be. There is a need for us to do what we call clinical analysis and related symptoms. Mm. If we are to treat fever as a symptom, because somebody that has sore throat will come down with fever. fever. Somebody that has urinary tract infection will come down with fever. Somebody mm. that has pelvic inflammatory disease will there, come there, down with fever. fever. Somebody that has uh, conjunctivitis, somebody that has meningitis, somebody that has tuberculosis. So there are associations. Mm. For example, if somebody has fever, your body temperature is high, then at night you That's sweat cold. excessively, then you begin to cough as well. So we may say this is tuberculosis until proven otherwise. Okay. So we treat along the line of the tuberculosis. Now, if somebody is having fever, at the same time, you now see that the person is having what you call lateralizing signs 
or is having meningism or uh, neck stiffness, we assume this person to be having meningitis, meningitis. until proven otherwise. If somebody has fever, <laughs> you know, you know, you're talking is making me laugh because once somebody has fever, the next thing is malaria. Everybody's no, trying to like, uh, yes, uh, without the, even going for, the truth for, of the matter, for medical yes. examination. The somebody is already providing. Yes, the truth uh, of the, the matter problem. is that fever is fever occur when there are exogenous or endogenous pyrogenes okay. that goes inside the human body. So, what are the things that are responsible for these endogenous and exogenous pyrogenes? That is infection. That is the one I talked about, microbes, microbes, which could be parasitic protozoa. For example, if you have a malaria parasite bite as a result of mosquito bites in your skin, it releases protozoid, which uh, goes to the liver, produces merozoid. The production of those merozoids mm -hmm. from the liver into your blood will not cause will not cause production of fetal leukins and tumor necrotic factors, in form of macrophage and, you know. So those things that are being released, these are the, these are the exogenous pyrogenes. So as it's releasing the, those merozoids, you can see that your body temperature, because they are, not, they are external to your, to your body now, the body tends to increase, to react to, to, react to it, as a way of trying to ward off these pyrogenes. Yes. That is why you have increase in body temperature. Okay. All right, I think we have a call. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Okay, doctor, we're still listening to you. So you see that because of those pyrogenes, in form yes. of an external uh, uh, infection into the human system, mm. that is why the body tends to protect itself by causing an increase in body temperature. The truth of the matter is that Increase the body temperature is supposed to be a protective mechanism against invasion of those micro, microbes. So in that case, naturally, we don't also allow this temperature to persist over time. Because this increase in body temperature is harmful to the, to the blood, okay. is harmful to the enzyme, is harmful to the new hormones. So in that case, when you... When okay, you... let, let's quickly pick this call, doctor. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Please tell us your name and ask your question, please. Uh, please, I'm calling from Navy Okay, can you reduce the audio okay. level on your television okay. set, please? Uh, let me go far from me. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, please, I want to inquire from doctor. Okay. What is the, what is the cause of somebody to fever? After two weeks again, the children will come back. Okay. They say that I have a, my my genitals is healthy. They say that is why I always have a fever. Oh, so I want okay. the doctor to enlighten on it more. All right. Thank okay. You. What has genital got to do with fever, according to yes. this caller now? The truth of the matter is that after a series of after a series of Go ahead. Genu to um, DNA studies. Yes. We now find out that people with AA tend to suffer more from malaria fever mm. as compared to those with SS and AS. Okay. That is one part. Like this man that just spoke, I don't know how your fever is being treated or how you are treating your fever. Okay, maybe is that after two poorly, weeks? Yes, maybe it's poorly, poorly treated, managed. Okay. Yes, poorly managed fever. It's possible. If, the, if it's malaria fever and the parasite is in the blood or it's in the liver producing those merozoids, yes. because uh, until the merozoids are produced, you, will not, you, will not, you don't feel feverish. Okay. And it's possible for you to also suppress the production of those merozoids instead of completely eliminating it. How, do you, how, how does one suppress that? We'd like to know. Yes. Suppressing the production of merozoids, it involves the use of tepi sponging. Okay. You the take a coat bath, or you use you use you know uh, uh, like a like a towel, towel to towel clean up like your like body, clean. or you expose your body for hair to come in, or you take just common paracetamol, a form of uh, antipyretic, something that helps to reduce your body temperature, as the case may be. But then that is not the definitive treatment. The main cause of what is causing that fever has not been treated.
the fever by taking medication that will help to reduce your body temperature. That is why, like in the case of malaria fever, because of the fact that some drugs was now seen to be resistance, okay. Kuni used to be very effective. So, so in, in the, the case of, of this man, who gets, used to be oh, very oh, effective. In the case of the of man who treats uh, malaria, two weeks after he comes down again with it, what is he supposed to do now? Let him see a doctor. I don't know the kind of drug that he's seeing. Okay. He might be using other anti-malaria drugs. Yes. That is why we say the best treatment for malaria is anti-mesine combination therapy. Okay. We need those parasites so away from your blood. Is to do, you to do a, a combination. Yes, exactly. That is why we say anti-mesine okay. combination therapy. I don't know the kind of drug that he's using. Okay. If it's malaria fever, but I believe he's not treating it well. Okay. But there's still a need for you to see a doctor, doctor. to evaluate the cause of that fever to see whether it's not treating something uh, else instead of the Okay, mucus. hello caller, good afternoon. Yes, I can hear you now. I can hear you. Hello? I can hear you. Please speak up. We are listening yes. to you. Okay. So if, if there's a viral infection, can it show in the white blood cells? Or it will not show, it will not make the white blood cells to increase okay. because it may have the fever now. Okay. Yes. The truth of the matter is the body has a way of defending itself against microbial okay. attack. The reason for the full blood count is to know the level of the white blood cell. Okay. In, the, in the presence of imminent infection, the white blood cell okay. gets elevated. The normal value okay. is 4,000 to 11,000. If it was elevated more than the 11,000, it becomes mm. a problem. Okay. However, okay. however, there is also a blood disease that could also cause increase in body temperature over time, like leukemia. So leukemia will cause elevation in white blood cell okay. with depletion in red blood cells. That is to say that the PCV will be low, the white blood cell will be high. Yeah. I believe the doctor suspected maybe uh, leukemia or a kind of a blood bone uh, cancer. That was why he did that test. But however, we do a full blood count to see... Check for infection. Yes. Yes, that's... What I'm trying to say, this the temperature is still there and it's called Fankata and there's no malaria. So if, uh, now, she says the white blood cells are normal. If it's a viral infection, will it reflect in the white blood cells? If there's viral infection, will it increase the white blood cells too? Because if there's bacterial infection, it will increase the white blood cells, which will lead to the fever or whatever. So now, the fever is still there. Still there. Hello? Yes. Yes, we're listening. Okay. With the, with the, the symptom... Yes. With the symptom of presentation... Yes. Because they have Yes. Then with fever. With but she looked at the white blood cells and said there was no infection. What I'm trying to say now, if the infection is viral, okay. we need to reflect we in need the white blood cells. White blood cell. Certainly, it will, it will cause an elevation in white blood cells also. However, mm. my advice, my advice for you is, my advice for you is, you would have, you would have done a chest X-ray because we are talking about a particular system of the body okay. that is infected, okay. considering fever, cough, and kata. There's a need for you to do a chest X-ray. It could be pneumonia. It could be okay. bronchitis, as the case may be, okay. or other infection related to upper respiratory tra tracts or lower respiratory tracts, as the case may be. Yes, okay. so do a chest X-ray. Chest X-ray is very important. That is what I was okay. talking about association. If a, patient okay. comes down, if a patient comes down with fever, you see that your body temperature is not high. We now high. try to high. ask other relating, re related questions. For example, for a TB patient, you see that they have night sweats. Okay. They cough as well. So that will make us to know that, oh, this one is tuberculosis. Mm. It's a respiratory tract Jacket. problem. But if it's gastroenteritis, maybe somebody is coming down with fever, is having a, is, is stooling excessively, 
or it's passing stool more than three times in a day, mm. maybe the stool is loose as the case may be, or there's a bloody stool, there's abdominal pain, it's pointing towards gastroenteritis. If somebody is having fever and at the same time the person is having maybe meningism mm -hmm. or neck stiffness, mm -hmm. it's pointing towards meningitis. meningitis. If somebody is having fever and maybe it's having maybe rashes on the body, it might be systemic lupus erythematosus. Okay. It might be measles as the case may be. It might, okay. You see, when we relate the association to the fever, so it enables us to know the system most likely that is affected and to, to, to reach a diagnosis. Okay, so I hope Madam is satisfied. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Hello. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Okay. All right, give us a call on 0522905573, and uh, you'll be glad you did. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, yeah. I'm following up this your program. Oh. And, uh, you are talking about in living. Oh yes. My is a music Okay. You're you're welcome. All right. Uh, yeah. I want to ask the doctor question. Please go ahead. Doctor Jolly Ikuma. Go ahead, please. The fever you have been talking about. You know, people do treat fever. And at times it do go, and at times it will come back. So I want to know, is there no permanent cure that you can just treat it and it will go once and for all? And disappear forever? And you know, when you treat, you are expected that the, treat, the fever should just be treated once and for all. You are living very well, I mean, living well in your environment. Yeah. Okay. Living very healthy. But uh, when you do a test, you find out that the fever to your core, I mean, the test proves positively. Okay. So what may be the possible cause? Okay, doctor. We'll okay. quickly give that uh, answer in a moment let me, so let that me, we can wrap it up. Let me say this declaratively. Please, when you, when you are told that you have fever, the disease that is causing that fever is not known yet. Fever is not the same thing as malaria. Fever is not the same thing as typhoid. Okay. Malaria causes fever. Typhoid causes fever. Mm. Meningitis causes fever. Okay. Tuberculosis causes fever. Okay. Coronavirus causes fever. So until you Ebola do, disease or, 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 causes or, or, fever. Until, you do a, until we do test. a clinical investigation, we will not know what is causing that fever. Okay. Many at times, they will say, oh, the doctor said I have fever. They believe that fever is synonymous to malaria. Okay. Fever is synonymous to typhoid. So, 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 the, so fever uh, is a broad symptom. As far as the thing is causing your body temperature to go beyond yeah. or to go above normal, you already have a fever. Okay. It's for us to elicit or evaluate the cause of the fever by, by knowing the association and by knowing whether it is a continuous fever, whether it's an intermittent fever, mm -hmm. whether it's a remittent fever, as okay. the case may be. Doctor, I know that uh, we'd like to talk more. Honestly, we'd like to talk more on this, but time is not our friend. But you can actually do a follow up on this topic by calling us on this number 080-3472-1750. 080-3472-1750. So you can call that number immediately after the program and we'll be able to attend to you and answer all of your questions, particularly those who are like television shy and wouldn't want their voice heard. 0803472 is the number to call. Dr. Jolly, our time is up. Thank you very much for finding time to be with Thank us. You for having me. So we're thanking Dr. Jolly and Mr. Daniel for finding time to be with us on the program Healthy Living. Your face mask is very important, okay? And then do all of the things you need to do to save yourself and, the, and your loved ones from COVID-19. We'll see you again on Monday. Bye-bye. This is ITV, certainly the best.
God, they do some motors. The same pay people, they need them down the road for business city. God, they do some motors. You know, same do you need a place to eat good food as if you are at home? Then, Home and Away Restaurant.